So this video is about doing informal assessment of your young student's knowledge of letter sounds and whether or not they can spell using that knowledge. So when you're really working with young students kindergarten to grade two or also older struggling readers, what you're wondering is, do they know that the sounds that we hear in our language, we can represent them with letters and that if we represent them with the right letters, people will be able to read what we wrote? For example, if I told you right now, oh, there's this new word that you might not know, it's called POS. Could you write the, the letters P-O-S um, to represent POS and could the next person read it? Now that's an interesting one because you're probably going to use your higher level spelling knowledge that after a short O sound we do two S's like TOS or MOS. And you're going to probably spell POS, P-O-S-S. -S. So I, I gave a bad example. Um, another example would be... Um, Vit. If I told you I want you to spell the word vit, it's a new word, you don't know it. Um, spell it so the next person can read it. You're going to spell it V-I-T, vit, and the next person is going to read that word vit. And that's because we represent the sounds in English with pretty predictable letters that other people can read. What you want to know for a young student is, do they know those letter sounds? Can they write them in a, in, um, a way that someone else could read it? And I'm more concerned with their ability to do invented spellings that are readable, that follow some sort of um, familiar patterns, and not necessarily conventional spellings. Although that is very important to teach students conventional spellings, what you're wanting to know is do they know letter sounds in a way that can, can help them spell. Now, when you're doing informal assessment, I mentioned in my other video that it's super important to make it so much easier for the student than you think they're going to be able to do, because you want to prevent failure especially for um, older students who are struggling. They know they're struggling, and if you make it too hard for them, it sets them up to feel bad about themselves. Um, if you have a student who you've done a letter sound reading assessment on, and they aren't able to recognize the sounds of very many letters, so you spread out your letters, you ask them, you know, what sound does this letter make and this letter make, and they're having a lot of difficulty with that, maybe they're only getting a few, then chances are they're not going to be able to spell letters. Chances are they're not, even, they're not going to be able to spell words. So you don't want to go there with them. That's going to be too stressful for them. And lots of people have this writing fear, like, I can't write, it's so hard. And young kids will feel that. So you don't want to go there. You might want to just have them write their name or, um, you know, you can have them copy a word if you want, although I'm not sure how much that will tell you other than whether or not they can actually form letters. Um, you could have them draw a picture and write about it, and you can see, are they trying to sound out the word and spell it or not? That's about as far as you want to go with those struggling students. You know that that's something you're going to have to teach them and help them with. However, if they're able to recognize some letters and sounds, then you can try to assess whether they can spell those, those letter sounds. So the most simple way to start is just by asking them, can you write the letter that makes the sound mmm? Can you write the letter that makes the sound And if they're having some success with that, I would say that you don't need to do an exhaustive, um, you know, test where you do every single letter in the alphabet and all the diagraphs. It's going to be too much effort. You just want to get a sense for whether they can do that, give them some momentum building. Um, and then you want to move to having them spell some words that are simple, that follow letter sound rules, that have consonants and short vowels in them. Okay? So the short vowel sounds are a, e, i, a, a. And you can watch my other video to learn more about how the short vowels sound. When you're thinking about words for students, now you have to get really good at unlearning what you've learned, looking at a word, sounding it out, and t asking yourself, does that vowel make the short sound in this word? So, you know, when I think, okay, I'm going to have my students spell the word um, dance, I sound out like this. D, and does it have a sound ah in it? Personally, for me, I find the words with an in them, the a ah isn't clear, so I don't use them for very early spelling tests. All right, pick another word. Okay, I want my students to spell the word dog. Does it have a short sound in it? D, a, g. Yes, it does. It has the a ah sound. It's made by the o, and the two other consonants sort of follow the rules, so that's a good word to use. So you're going to start probably with two letter short vowel words if your students are sort of at a lower level, like it is a good word, up, at. In. Um, and then you can use a really, really simple list. I just made this list up actually, with five words on it. And these five words have most of the consonants and all five short vowels in them. 
And I try to make them relatively familiar words because the kids never heard of the word. It's hard for them to keep it in their memory to spell it. So I tried to pick words. You can tweak this list. Maybe it has some sounds on here that you're not interested in finding out. Maybe there are letter sounds that you want to test. So what is important about this list is that, again, all the vowel, short vowels are here. All the consonants make their sound. There is nothing weird in this list. So you can give the kids this five word spelling test and you can find out if they can, uh, if they know how to spell all these different letters. Now, it is important to consider that sometimes it's hard to hear letters or letter sounds at different positions in the word. So they might be able to spell fun with an F sound at the beginning of the word, but they might have a hard time spelling raft with the F sound at the third letter position in the word. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about, oh, they know how to spell the word F. They know how to spell the letter F. They're going to do it right in every word. Well, maybe not, but this is a starting point. If your kids are having a really easy time spelling these CVC words, um, then you can try to uh, get them with a few consonants at the beginning or a few consonants at the end, like CCVC words or CBCC words. And that means that you have a consonant blend somewhere in the word. So if you put a consonant word at the be a consonant blend at the beginning of a word, it would be a word like clip. So you have k, l, i, p. So you still have your short vowel. It's now a four-letter word. There's four sounds in the word that the student has to hear and sound them out one at a time. And um, a lot of students will start to struggle at this point, especially your younger students, your struggling students. Um, and so it, it gives you a good sense of how many sounds can they hear in a word? How many of them can they represent accurately? And that's a really, really good starting point. Then you can start to incorporate some words that have some of your digraphs in it. Start off with your constant digraphs. You can have a word like chip, where the ch ch is in the word. And then you're assessing, do they know that even though there's only one sound there, ch, you have to use two letters to represent it. And again, your younger students, your struggling students, a lot of them will start to fall apart at this point. Um, if they're doing really well at that, you can also start to add some of your long vowel patterns like rain with the AI in it, boat with the OA in it, some of your R controlled vowels like turn, the er sound. Um, and again, just be very, very mindful of the words that you're asking them to spell and what letters and letter sounds are in those words. Um, if you're having a lot of trouble coming up with good words or wanting to know really do they know the, word, uh, the letter sounds themselves and not just the word, you can use non-words. So you can have them spell a word like mub or fet to see if they can hear all the sounds and transcribe it in the words. But you know what, I think that's probably a bit challenging and I think this is a pretty reasonable starting point to give you some information about that. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. And hopefully that will give you a sense for your students and whether they can have some letter sound knowledge that helps them to spell.